Welcome to Small Scale Speed. This is the KT-18 controller. This is pretty much the standard controller if you have an ASF Mini-Z. It does the job perfectly well, but it's pretty basic. This is my personal all-time favorite controller. JR Racine XS3 Pro. It's been around in a lot of different forms and a lot of different names. It was even released as a Spectrum. So, you might be thinking, what does this all have to do with Mini-Zs? This is also my favorite controller. But if you look closely, it's a little bit different and the antenna should give it away. This one has been converted to 2.4 gigahertz to actually work with ASF and MHS compatible Mini-Zs. So, if you're curious about how I did that, let's take it apart and then I'll show you what the conversion process looked like. So inside here is a bit of a mess, but I'll run you through kind of what's going on. This is the DOS Micro DSK-124. It will take a PPM signal from your transmitter and send it via MHS or ASF to your Mini-Z. On the top from right to left, there is ground, power, the bind circuit, PPM signal, LED, and mode select. Over here, I have an NTE 960. It's a 5 volt power supply. The instructions for the DSK-124 say it can run on 3.7 volts to 9.6 volts. But in testing on my first one, it did not seem that tolerant of over voltage. Um, and I think that's why my first one blew out. So to play it safe, I'm running this 5 volt power supply to give it a constant voltage source. Then I have the antenna going out. And I did have to use a longer antenna. I was having glitching problems with ASF with the standard antenna that came with this board. Then this is all mounted on a Spectrum DX3.0 radio board. This way I can take advantage of the bind button and the LED from the Spectrum controllers that happen to work on the rest of this style of controller. So for this whole process, probably the most time intensive part of it is researching your PPM signal. I was lucky in that I wasn't the first person to open up one of these radios. So a lot of the info I needed was already out there. If you're not so lucky and have to do this on your own, here's some pointers to try to help you. If you have a separate radio board, usually there are only gonna be a few connections between the main board and the daughter board, which should help narrow it down the options. Usually you'll see a power and a ground and a signal, and maybe an antenna return. Then on the case, I did cut in a hole for the externally accessible switch this is just a simple two-stage switch, so this way I can either select MHS on or MHS off. So now with this all buttoned up again, you can kind of go through some of the operations of it. For the board, it's kind of like the regular KT-18, where you have to hold your bind button, power on, that'll put the board into bind mode, just like with a normal Mini-Z, you want to put your Mini-Z in bind mode first, and then you bind your controller. So now, let's take a look at how it works with Mini-Zs. Here I have two of my Mini-Zs. Both of these are MRO3s. The one on the right, as you can tell by the black antenna, is an ASF model. The one on the left, with the red antenna, you can tell is both ASF and MHS. So on my controller, I have my frequency selection up for ASF. 
go ahead and turn it on. And then I have control over that car. Turn it off. Go back, switch to my MHS. Turn it on. And the other car works. So hopefully that gives you a good idea on what's involved in converting an older radio to work with an MHS or an ASF Mini-Z. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you need any help finding a PPM signal, uh, please feel free. I'd love to help out in projects like this. As always, thank you again for watching. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. This is Small Scale Speed.